A velocity time graph shows how the velocity of an object changes over time. These graphs can be used to show many examples of moving objects, like car journeys or races, for example. Most things we can draw a distance time graph for, we can also draw a velocity time graph for. Like a distance time graph, the x values represent time, but for a velocity time graph, the y values represent the velocity at that time. Let's look at an example of a bird flying towards the ground so we can get an understanding of how these graphs work. As the bird starts moving, the velocity quickly rises as it gains speed. It then stays at this speed for a few seconds before slowing down again, and the height of our graph changes depending on the bird's speed. Let's take a closer look at the graph we've just made. What does each point on the graph represent? Each point on the graph tells us the velocity at a certain point in time. This is the same as reading the x value and the y value for a point on the graph, as these are the time and velocity respectively. So for this point here, we have a y value of 4 and an x value of 0.5. This tells us that the bird was travelling at 4 metres per second when the time was 0.5 seconds. Here when we say the time was 0.5, we mean 0.5 seconds after we started recording the bird's velocity. Let's try reading the value of another point. Here we have a y value of 2 and an x value of 7. So the bird was travelling at 2 metres per second, 7 seconds after we started recording the velocity. It's also worth noting that velocities can be positive or negative. For a velocity time graph, negative velocities would be when the graph goes beneath the x-axis. You won't really come across this at GCSE though, and you also won't be penalised for referring to the y-values as speeds instead of velocities. Now let's look at what the shape of the graph tells us. Well, the steeper the gradient, the greater the magnitude of acceleration at this time. Remember that acceleration is a measure of how quickly an object's velocity is changing. Acceleration is when the velocity increases and deceleration is when the velocity decreases. And then the gradient of the graph tells us how quickly the y value is changing when the x value changes. So for a velocity time graph, the gradient shows us what the object's acceleration is. Just from looking at the graph, we can tell that this first section has a stronger acceleration or deceleration than the last section. But let's try to understand why. In the first section, it takes one second for the bird's velocity to change by 8 metres per second. But then in the last section, after one second, the velocity is only changed by 2 metres per second. This means that during the first section, there is a greater change of speed in one second. In other words, there's a stronger acceleration here. Now what about this middle section where the graph is flat? What's happening here? Well, if the graph is horizontal, then the object is travelling with a constant velocity at this time. Because the middle section is flat, it has the same y value throughout. And since the y value isn't changing, we can say that we have a constant speed here. Now remember that acceleration is a measure of how velocity is changing. So if there is no change in velocity, then we know that there must be no acceleration. One thing to be very careful of is that the object is still moving during this flat section. It is not stationary. This is a very common error in exams, often because students get these graphs confused with distance time graphs. Make sure you understand the difference between these types of graphs. Now remember that we can have accelerations for increasing velocities and decelerations for decreasing velocities. So how do we show this on the graph? If the gradient is positive, the object is accelerating, whereas if the gradient is negative, the object is decelerating. Remember that a positive gradient is when the y values increase from left to right, like this first section here. We start at zero, which is where the object will actually be stationary, and then the velocity increases to eight meters per second. This means that the bird was accelerating from rest during this section. A negative gradient is where the y values decrease from left to right, like the last section of the graph. Here, the velocity is decreasing back to zero, meaning the bird was decelerating to rest.
For your exam, you need to be able to explain what a velocity time graph tells us both qualitatively and mathematically. Let's try doing this now with an example. The velocity time graph below shows the start of a practice race between two sprinters. Discuss the differences in the sprinter's motion during the race. So this is an interesting example where we have two graphs on the same axes and need to compare the two. Also notice that we're not given a scale on either axis, so there's going to be no calculations involved in this question. We're only describing the differences in words and need to have a good understanding of what the shapes of the graphs mean. So for step one, compare the steepness of the first section of each graph. So let's look at these two diagonal sections. We can see that the graph for sprinter one is steeper than the graph for sprinter two. The question asks us to compare the motion though, rather than just the graphs. So we should think about what this means. Remember that the steeper a velocity time graph is, the greater an acceleration it represents. So we can say that sprinter one had the greater acceleration. For step two, compare the height of the second section of each graph. So here we can see that the graph for sprinter two is higher than the graph for sprinter one. Again, we should talk about what this represents rather than just what we see in the graph. Remember that the y values of a velocity time graph represent an object's velocity. Assuming the two sprinters are running in the same direction, then we can deduce that sprinter two had the faster top speed. Depending on the number of marks available, this should cover all of the key points and be enough to answer a question like this in an exam. Make sure to try and include as much information and detail as possible though, and in general try to aim for one key point per mark available. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.